In this video, I want to talk about the key principles to setting up a lower league tactic so that you can be successful with a side whose players maybe aren't very good. And to do so, I'm going to chat a little bit here about the tactic that I'm using in my lower league save with players that aren't great, but it's a tactic that's worked well so far. We are undefeated to start the season, and we've taken the team with a thousand to one odds to win the league to the top of the league at an early stage. This is what the tactic looks like. Essentially, it looks like a generic 4-4-2. But I want to talk about the key principles that make this tactic work, and then we'll look at some in-game examples that show how the tactic works in the match engine. So to actually start talking about this tactic, I have what is essentially a generic 4-4-2. And what I would do is I would encourage you to look at your own squad and develop a formation that works with the players you've got. So if you have really great center backs, Maybe you'll go to a three center back system, or maybe you have great center mids and no wide players, in which case, maybe you'll go to a diamond formation, or maybe you have some really great forwards and you want to go three up top. All of those formations would work just fine. There's just a few key things that I keep in mind when making a lower league tactic that I think are very important. So beginning up top, I want to make sure and any tactic that I'm doing, that I have players who are looking to run in behind the defense and are capable of running in behind the defense. So this is how I've accomplished it here. So first up, I have Dexter Chio here. And honestly, he's probably the most important goal scoring part of my tactic by just being a generic advanced forward. But the reason this works is because Chio, as an advanced forward, is constantly looking to get in behind the defense. He's on the last defender, constantly looking to make runs in behind. And this works because Chio, for this level, has pretty good off the ball movement and pretty good pace. So he is able to get beyond the last defender and get in behind the defense. And this is even better for us because Chio has pretty good dribbling, Pretty good finishing and pretty good first touch for this level. So if any ball is going in behind, he's able to take it down and find the finish. But Chio isn't the only person looking to get in behind. I have overloaded this side by including Baldo here as an inside forward on attack as another player that's looking to get in behind the defense. And these two here are extremely important to the tactic because they're the ones getting in behind. At the next level down, you have players looking to get in behind. So at this point, you need to be playing a tactic that is looking to feed those players in. And that's where we have these players here. We have June Ramos, who's playing as a deep leg forward in attack. I have him on attack because he could still get in behind by being on attack. However, he is dropping into this space here to pick up the ball, and we have him immediately looking for that pass in behind. So June Ramos gets tons of assists just by playing in someone like Chio or Baldo. Similarly, players like Titoi, Hajimadi, and Soberano, when they get the ball, they're immediately looking direct to play in those players. And finally, the last kind of important thing that I think you need to consider when setting up uh, a formation is make sure that you have enough players back. Ultimately, like with everything in Football Manager, especially in the lower leagues, it is a bit of it is a bit of a numbers game. So you do want to make sure that you have enough players back to deal with any potential numbers that the opposition has going forward. So here we have a pretty conservative back four. They're staying back, and we have Hajimati as a deep lying player on defense, so he's sitting deeper here as well. So we have enough players back to be able to deal with the opposition threat. So that in general is kind of the thinking behind the formation, but, and actually what I think is more important are the instructions, because this is what ends up actually making the tactic play and work in the match engine. And the important things here, I think, are increased passing directness, increasing that tempo, and passing into space. And the reason for that is, my players aren't very good, and most lower league players aren't very good. 
So you can't really play a lower tempo with shorter passing directness. It just, it's hard to keep possession at a lower league level. And my player's passing and vision just isn't really good enough to be able to play a slower possession-based game. So for this, we have set up a formation with runners getting in behind. So we are trying to play in those runners as quickly and as fast as we can. And this is especially effective off turnovers, especially when the other team had possession, they're looking up the field and they've turned the ball over and now their defenders are just running back. We're able to get behind. We're looking to pass the ball in the space behind the defense. We're direct about it and we're doing it quickly. And this has gotten tons of goal scoring opportunities for me. Another thing that I think really helps with this is then creating turnovers and going off those turnovers quickly. So I turn on counter press and I turn on counter because at this point we're counter pressing, we're looking to win the ball back quickly. And when we create those turnovers, this is the best opportunity within the match engine to score goals. And this is where I found most goals happening at this lower league level. So we're not necessarily building up play. We're creating turnovers, getting players forward, and scoring goals off of those opportunities. So I always turn on counter press. This is going to increase the opportunities for creating turnovers. And when possession has been won, we are immediately looking to counter, get players forward and get behind so that we can capitalize off of those situations. And finally, the out of possession instructions, again, are based on just creating those turnovers so that we can get in behind. We are triggering the press much more often. And the reason we're doing that is because in your lower league save, the people you're going up against probably don't have a great first touch and probably don't have great passing. And additionally, probably don't have great decision making and all of those mental attributes that are important for making smart decisions on a pitch. So if we can trigger press much more often and we're just constantly pressing them, we can take advantage of those poor decisions, of that poor passing, of that poor first touch to win the ball more often and again, be creating those turnovers. And for that reason, I would just say with the lines, I wouldn't go below a mid block. I think it's important to, especially here, have players forward so that when you win the ball, their starting position is a little higher up the pitch. So you can immediately look to get in behind. If we're dropping the line of engagement back here, there's a lot more distance that our forwards need to go to get in behind after we win the ball. So I don't think being direct is as effective in that way. So if we go to a mid block or maybe even a higher line of engagement, our players are further forward. They don't have to run so far to get it behind the defense. And we're starting off, we win the ball, we're starting off closer to goal and we have a better chance of scoring. The only other instruction I have clicked on here is get stuck in. And I'm kind of debating on this one. I, I don't actually recommend getting stuck in because I have gotten a red card and conceded a couple pens, um, which I think is because of the get stuck in tactic. I actually took off the get stuck in tactic for the last two matches and I didn't get a red card or allow any pens. Um, so if I were going through this tactic and making it myself again, I'm actually just going to click off get stuck in now. Um, but you can experiment with that and see what works best for your team. And finally, the mentality that I have on here is balanced. I think it's a mentality that works well for a lower league save. You're balancing attack and defense. You could also potentially go with positive mentality if you think you're a better team. And I would encourage that if you think you're a better team. But I don't think I would go below balance. Give your, give your guys a chance to win the match. And those, I think, are the key principles to setting up a lower league tactic. In the lower leagues, the main goal here is to create turnovers and get the ball forward as quickly as you can. So set up a tactic that allows your players to get in behind, allows your players to play quickly and directly, and allows your players to harry the opposition to get as many turnovers and chances like that as possible. If you set up your lower league tactic like that, and you set up your players to be able to play that way, I think that is successful.
And this isn't the first time I've implemented this tactic. I think it actually works even better in the FM24 match engine because the increased diversity of goals allows for more turnovers and allows for more goals scored off of them. But I've also used this tactic or a version of this tactic in FM22 where I took Dulwich Hamlet and the Vanarama National League South and brought them all the way up to the Premier League. And the first few years of that save, I used a tactic really built on these principles. The only difference was I had five at the back and it worked really well. We were able to get promoted. So in general, I think these kind of general principles for setting up a lower league tactic are very good. But with that, let's actually see what this looks like in the match engine so that you all can see how it actually works. So I'm going to show a few examples of goals where we won the ball off of a turnover, got the ball forward quickly, and immediately scored. And to start off, this is a match against Kaya. And Kaya is the preseason favorites for winning the league, and they have the best players in the division. But we were able to defeat them by creating turnovers and scoring quickly. So here are some examples of what that looks like. So to start off, we are going to look at a goal from June Ramos, who is one of our forwards. So as we can see here, we're the team in red and Kaya is the team in yellow. So Kaya has the ball here with a throw-in. So our goal here is to win the ball off the throw-in, which we take advantage of very well. That's a really poor throw-in. Soberano wins the ball. And the important thing here is Soberano is immediately looking forward and looking to play that ball forward. Unfortunately, Chio is outmanned, so he plays the ball backwards. Same thing with Hajimadi. And at this point, we play the ball back to Montalabino. Now, for probably a higher save, Montalabino, if he was like a ball playing center back, he's looking to keep possession and probably looking to go out wide. But instead, for this lower league tactic, we're just looking to play the ball forward. We're looking to play very direct and get in behind. That's exactly what we're able to do. And off of a mistake from the keeper, we're able to find the back of the net from creating that turnover and playing more direct to get this opportunity. So here is another example from a match against Stallion, another one of the better teams in the league. And as we can see here, Stallion starts with the ball from the goal kick, and they're going to be able to be looking to play the ball out of the back. But we have our press set up so that we can create a turnover and garner a chance off of that turnover. So playing the ball forward, we're not immediately pressing. We have that mid block, so we're not super high. But once Stallion works the ball into the midfield, we are all over that. We win possession, and now we're immediately looking for that ball forward. So remember what I said about making sure that you have players going in behind. So one of those players was Baldo. He is the inside forward on attack. Once we got the ball, he was immediately looking to get in behind. Titoy played a brilliant ball over the top. Now Baldo's in behind the defense. He makes the right decision to go for the cross instead for the shot. And June Ramos is able to find the back of the net. So here is another example early in a match against Maharlika Manila, a team kind of about the same level as us. And Maharlika Manila starts off with a goal kick. So before we saw what it looked like when a team went short, but this is an example of when a team goes long. So as we can see here, and what's really important is winning the second ball. So we were fortunate enough to win the first ball off of the goal kick, and we had the numbers available to also win the second ball and gain possession. Now, Baldo has the ball, and instead of looking to maybe play it around and keep possession, he just goes straight over the top to Dexter Chio. At this point, we take advantage of Chio's good first touch, so now he set himself to take the shot, and he's able to apply the finish. So, this worked because we, able, we were able to win the ball off the goal kick, we created that turnover, we immediately looked over the top in a very direct manner, we were able to get in behind with our runners, and he was able to find the back of the net. So these are the last couple of examples I'm going to show. So we're going to start off with a goal that once again, Dexter Chio scores in a match against ADT. So as we can see here, <laughs> this time we're actually the ones with the ball. 
But again, we are looking to play a very direct style and we're looking to get the ball forward quickly. So Titoy in the midfield, he plays it forward to Montalbino. He plays it forward to Soberano. And Soberano wastes absolutely no time in finding that direct ball over the top to our players running in behind. In this case, it's Chio. Again, we get to weaponize Chio's first touch and good finishing, and he's able to get and find the back of the net. So this play works because Chio is looking to get him behind in that advanced forward role, and we're looking to play quickly and direct over the top to get him in behind for that finish. And the last example I'm going to show is actually a disallowed goal, but it's another opportunity to show how this tactic works, and it's from the ensuing kickoff. So at this point, ADT is looking to play out of the back. However, we are able to create a good turnover. Again, we're looking at a player who doesn't have a good first touch, so we're able to press and create that turnover. And again, we are immediately looking to play forward. Montalabino plays it back to Hajimadi. Hajimadi plays it out wide to Soberano. And now we are in behind and looking to get an opportunity there. Unfortunately, we aren't able to make the most of that opportunity. However, when ADT gets the ball back, we immediately are looking to create that turnover through a bad pass, which we do and look forward again. Once we look forward, we have runners moving in behind. Notably, Baldo here, he's looking to run in behind, and Chio, who already made his run in behind, so now he has to get back on sides. But with those runners getting in behind, we're able to find Baldo. Baldo is able to finish. Unfortunately, the timing of the run in the pass was a little off. He ends up being off sides. However, it's another good example of how this tactic works in the match engine. So that is everything I've got for this lower league tactic video. Overall, to summarize what I've gone over, my main recommendations for setting up a lower league tactic are to set up something where you're going to win turnovers through triggering that press often, counter pressing and countering, and then taking advantage of those turnovers by playing at a quick tempo and a direct style. I think if you combine all those things into a formation that works well for your team, then that should help you to be very successful. But that's everything I've got for this video. I hope that you have found this to be helpful. I hope that you are doing well in your lower league saves. And with that, I hope you all have a wonderful week, and I will see you all in the next video. Bye!